welcome back to the computer hardware and OS essentials lecture series. I created these custom lectures based on A plus certification program but with few enhancements to improve your IT technical skills and knowledge. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I will post a link in the description for the playlist. This would be our 17th lecture in which I will cover Windows Desktop Operating System Fundamentals. The primary objectives of this lecture is to learn the use of Windows Desktop to interface with users, files and folders, applications and hardware, introduce you to the fundamental Windows Desktop GUI features, also known as graphical user interface features, explain the various ways Windows secure resources on network and secure a network connections, and we will cover the key concepts that will be important to the A plus certification program. So we will not go over any advanced concepts related to Windows desktop uh, configurations. Those you can find on my YouTube channel elsewhere, but however, it won't be a part of your A plus certification program. So we will just focus on the items that will be important to your A plus certification program. Windows interfaces. An operating system, also known as an OS, is a software that controls a computer. All operating systems share the following four main functions. They provide a user interface, also known as a GUI or sometimes a terminal. Manage files, manage hardware and manage applications. So whether you are using Windows, Linux, Mac OS, any of those operating systems, they have to support these four main functions, provide a user interface, manage files, manage hardware, and manage applications. Windows 11 is the latest Microsoft operating system, and it is an upgrade to Windows 10, which was preceded by the uh, Windows 8 and Windows 7. So the Windows 8 and Windows 7 are preceded, uh, like a preceded like previous versions of the Windows 11. Every Windows operating system offers a graphical user interface, also known as GUI. So the GUI uses graphics instead of a command-driven interface. For example, if you install Windows Server 2022 Core Edition, that doesn't have a GUI. So it is basically have a, a terminal to interact, right? But all Windows operating systems, even the server operating systems, do have the GUI options. So for your end user that is using a Windows desktop operating systems, they all will have the graphical user interface. It make it easier for to operate. It is easier for them to uh, navigate through different functions and options. Windows 10 and Windows 11 offers two GUIs, the desktop and tablet modes. We are the features called the continuum. Um, so the Windows 10 is the first one to offer that continuum. So that's why it is mentioned here. Windows 10 and Windows 11 interfaces. Windows 10 desktop. Tools used by technicians to support secure and troubleshoot Windows as well as productivity software can be accessed from the start menu, desktop and taskbar. The taskbar, usually located at the bottom of the Windows desktop, displays information about open programs and provides quick access to others. By default, Windows 10 pins the task view, Microsoft Edge, File Explorer, and store icons in quick launch toolbar on the left side of the taskbar. This is also uh, true with the newly released Windows 11 uh, as well. The start menu has live tiles on the right side of the menu that offer continuous real-time updates, which is also a feature in Windows 11 as well. The bottom left corner of the start menu has a few icons that you can use to access important functions. So on the right hand side, you will see that uh, right here, for example, you will see that action center, uh, it is called action, action center in Windows 10. Uh, and uh, I believe in Windows 11, it is called the notification center. And that will have some icons that you can 
uh, you know, um, used to interact with the uh, operating system. So the start menus look like this. This is Windows 7, 10 start menu and it'll have all the programs on the left hand side and some tiles and pins uh, program, pin program on the right hand side. This is for quick access and this is for all the programs that you have installed. Windows 10 desktop also have the ability to use the GUI to launch a program from the desktop. So you can use multiple ways uh, to do that. So you can either use the start menu, Windows 10 search box with Cortana, or you can use the Windows 11 search box with Cortana, quick launch menu, pin to taskbar, double click the program file in the file explorer, shortcut on the desktop, or you can simply use the run box or search box. The either all of those items uh, can be used to launch a program or a software in Windows 10 as well as the Windows 11 as well. So for example, you can do right click an app to pin to the taskbar from the start menu and this is how you do it. It's just a screenshot just to show you and give you a basic idea if you're not familiar with Windows. And here's an example of the use of the run uh, box to launch a configuration option or a program. So in here, I'm uh, running the run on a Windows um, 10 and here is a Windows 11. So they all look the same. It's the exact same run box. It just Windows 11 have the cornered, uh, corners uh, rounded up uh, as opposed to this one doesn't. So the basic functions of the run command has not changed between the Windows 10 and the Windows 11. So the Windows 10 features includes the Action Center, which used to toggle several Windows features on and off, access the Settings app and view notification. Cortana, which is a Windows 10's digital assistant that can learn your speech, handwriting patterns, if you have a handwriting um, recognition computer, uh, the typing history to assist with the user input. The Snap Assist uh, is used to snap windows to an edge or a corner and allows for half and quadrant uh, uh, snapping. Task View is used to create multiple virtual desktops so you can flip through the desired desktop as needed. Uh, keep in mind as we go through, I'll switch between some Windows 10 and Windows 11 features but I talk a lot about Windows 10 in this lecture because as of 2022 August, most of the uh, corporate environments, you will be running into Windows 10 as opposed to Windows 11. In fact, I would expect at least a year or two years from now for corporations and organizations to switch over to Windows 11. So that's why the A plus certification program heavily uh, still as of now, uh, you know, uh, focus more on Windows 10. So keep that in mind. But I, I added a few um, items associated with Windows, with Windows 11. Uh, to enhance your understanding of certain technical aspects of that. But as of now, the uh, of August 2022, A-plus certification program uh, is heavily focused on Windows 10 as opposed to Windows 11. So keep that in mind. So in case anybody wondering why I'm talking about Windows 10 all the time, even though right now most people are switching over to Windows 11. So here's a Windows 11, for example. Uh, so it is very similar to Windows 10 GUI, right? The same options as a Windows 10 with the taskbar, task menu, etc., does exist in Windows 11. So if you haven't seen my uh, demonstrations on Windows 10 and Windows 11 on my YouTube channel, you'll see that this is exactly the same thing. Even if you use a MacBook, it's very easy for you to switch on to the Windows if you want to. Certain features have been moved uh, to more uh, intuitive locations. Uh, so basically, uh, for example, the network connections can be reached either via the control panel or through settings now because Windows 11 now have that uh, network connections information also located under the settings uh, app itself. Uh, you may update the configuration information for a specific item at either at the control panel location or some other location or at the settings menu in the Windows 11 desktop and it will automatically get updated uh, on the other place as well. It's the same play, same update that you're doing. It, dis it The Microsoft have moved uh, where you can do those up uh, updates, right? So the Windows 11, why the Microsoft is doing this is that Microsoft is trying to make Windows more appealing to the public with limited technical knowledge. So basically what that means is on my next uh, slide, I will show you 
uh, how it make it easier for certain users. So instead of going to control panel, now you can simply go to the same place you typically go, the settings of, uh, of you know applications and then change items. And that will make it easier in Microsoft point of view for the public with limited technical knowledge to change uh, settings of a Windows machine. So if the end user uh, for you, let's say IT technician, if your end user input is uh, required for certain configurations, let's say you need your end user to enter a, an IP address, for example, for a static IP configurations, right? It is recommended at this time, as of 2022 August, to use new settings options with better GUI navigation over the old control panel options. So if you want to tell your um, end user or end client to change an IP address, don't send them through the uh, control panel with the Windows 11, send, it, send them through the, uh, the settings options on the start menu. So you go to the start and settings. Right. So the Microsoft is slowly taking away some of the options in the control panel as well. So they are slowly moving uh, certain items from control panels and moving that onto the settings sections of the Windows 11. So as Microsoft is doing this, they might actually remove certain features completely from the control panel as they are rolling out certain updates. So keep that in mind. So the previous uh, versions, including Windows 10 and the previous uh, Windows versions, all the settings options can be found in the control panel. Right now, as of August 2022, you can find the same set options, uh, configurations option, both under control panel and the settings section. But as we move on, Microsoft may slowly take away so those options from the control panel and completely move on to the settings app itself. So here is a screenshot of uh, Windows uh, 11. And on uh, the right hand side on the, the big the, this big uh, screenshot you see uh, that the under new settings on the windows 11 you can go on to the network and internet from the left hand pane and then select ethernet option and then you can change your ipv4 configuration to from the dhcp to a static ip address if you want to but you, this option is also available under control panel, under network and internet, under network connections. You can select the network interface card or network interface, right click and go to properties. And in the properties, you can change the same IP settings. But if you change the IP settings here, it will impact here as well. If you change IP settings here, it will change here as well. So it doesn't matter where you choose to change your IP addresses or whether you're gonna select a different IP protocol, for example, going from IPv4 to IPv6, you can either do it through the settings app itself in Windows 11, or you can do it in the old fashioned way under the control panel. Because this control panel is available in Windows 10 and Windows 11. This is available in Windows 11 and may be rolling out to Windows uh, 10 as well as Microsoft update Windows 10 uh, as we uh, move forward as well. So keep that in mind. So Microsoft is slowly moving these kind of options such as changing the IP address into the settings option, settings apps in the Windows 11. And uh, as we move forward, some of these options may get deleted or move out of the these traditional uh, old methods uh, as Microsoft rollout updates. So keep that in mind. So here's an example of two different places to update the same options because of this duality that the Microsoft has created with the Windows 11. Choosing a Windows edition. Windows 11 desktop has two main editions. Those are Windows 11 Home and Windows 11 Pro. The Education Enterprise and IoT Enterprise are Windows 11 desktop versions with extended support for specific market segments. And all of those items such as the Education Enterprise, IoT Enterprise are all Windows 11 Pro editions. So for home users, in most scenarios, I would just recommend the Windows 11 Home, but even for home users, you may want to recommend Windows 11 Pro if they are willing to, uh, uh, first of all, uh, pay the upfront uh, extra fee. Like the, 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 there is a difference between uh, how much it costs to install Windows 11 versus to install Windows 11 Pro. So the Windows, but, but it does come with some certain 
features such as domain join features, uh, certain BitLocker features that may not be available on the, uh, that is not available on the Windows 11 Home Edition. So keep that in mind. But when it's come to the point, education, enterprise, IoT enterprise, all of those Windows 11 editions are actually pro versions of Windows 11 editions with certain extended support for that specific market segment. When it's come to the point, Windows 11 editions, because we still do install fresh installs of Windows 11, especially in the enterprise and also some home environments. Uh, so those editions, we have the Windows 10 Home Edition, Windows 10 Pro Edition and Windows 10 Enterprise Edition and Windows 10 Education Editions. Uh, the differences between Windows 10 Home Edition and Windows 10 Pro Edition uh, is things like the domain join functions and the Windows uh, uh, 10 Pro and Windows 10 Enterprise are very similar to each other while the Windows 10 Education uh, is uh, closer to Windows 10 Pro than to Windows 10 Enterprise. Windows 10 Enterprise is basically same as Windows 10 Pro uh, with uh, some volume licensing just like the, uh, the Windows 11 Pro Enterprise uh, and some extended support for uh, those organizations and specific markets. Windows 8 options are Windows 8.1 uh, Core, Windows 8.1 Pro, Windows 8.1 Enterprise. Windows 8.1 Core is basically a core edition that does not have a GUI and specifically uh, built to use uh, in specific uh, you know, development environments and computer engineering environments. So keep that in mind when you are recommending them. Windows 7, I don't know who uses Windows 7 in 2022, uh, but if there is a need in your business company or home environments to use Windows 7, there are Windows 7 Home Basic and Premium, then when you have Windows 7 professional and windows 7 enterprise again for domain join functions and some advanced function you need to install windows 7 professional and enterprise enterprise comes with volume licensing while the professionals do not and when you select uh, windows 10 if possible uh, microsoft support for its latest os uh, lasts uh, longer and the windows 10 is uh, an improvement uh, but uh, as of August 2022, I wouldn't even install Windows 10 even though the A plus certification program official documentations recommend me installing Windows 10 um, uh, even in 2022. I would recommend that installing the latest Windows 11 stable edition uh, because it will last longer uh, and it is an improvement to the Windows 10 itself. So as of now, we still recommend using Windows 10. Uh, especially in corporate and business environments because you know that is the most stable uh, 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 well tested uh, operating system but windows 11 is not bad as of 2022 august so you know if i would in a, in a small business environment i would certainly just install windows 11 professional uh, but in a corporate environment you may still have to go with windows 10 um, because it is still the uh, dominant uh, operating system for windows desktops when choosing an edition of Windows, consider the purpose uh, for which the Windows is used, right? So keep that in mind. Like I mentioned, the BitLocker and certain features such as encryption and certain um, domain join functions may, uh, is not available on home edition. So keep that in mind when you are recommending Windows. Choosing a Windows edition. Consider the following features that the user or organization might require that is not available in home edition, such as the domain access, BitLocker function, encryption file systems, also known as EFS, uh, branch cache and media center. So those are certain functions that may not may, uh, be available in all um, editions, especially in home edition. So keep that in mind, as I mentioned before on my previous slide. Windows tools for users and technicians. All users need to know how to use File Explorer or Windows Explorer. So it is now called File Explorer uh, on Windows 10 and up. And in the previously Windows 7 and Windows 8, it is called Windows Explorer. It's the same thing. It's just Microsoft decided to change the name, right? A technician also needs to know how to use the following built-in programs, such as the control panel, power options, system window, system information window, uh, the action center, which is for Windows 8 and 7, and settings for Windows 11, event viewer, performance monitor, task manager, etc. etc. Again, I'm not going into any more 
high level detail in this lecture but you should know these things exist and how to use as an a plus technician windows file explorer and windows explorer so remember those are just same kind of a synonym for the same uh, application it just windows decided to uh, change uh, from uh, you know windows explorer to file explorer uh, since windows 10. So to open uh, File Explorer or Windows Explorer, just click the yellow File Explorer folder or Windows Explorer icon in the taskbar. From Windows 10, 8 desktops, uh, you can quick launch with the uh, Windows button and X. Um, and, you know, it's a Windows button uh, and then hold down that Windows button while you are pressing X, it'll open up the Windows Explorer in the menu. Uh, and for Windows 7, you can right click the Start uh, and select open windows explorer from the menu as well for uh, windows 10 uh, enter uh, the explorer in the search box it will open as well and in windows 10 click the microphone button on the search box and tell cortana to open the windows explorer that will open up as well and most of these features also is the same uh, for windows 11 as well so you can open windows Le uh, explorer uh, the, sorry, the file explorer uh, using the Windows 11 by just going into Cortana and asking it to open the file explorer, it will open as well and you can follow the same thing. Even though I don't mention Windows 11 here, it is the same thing and the same way it operates. So here is a uh, screenshot of Windows 10 and Windows 11 file explorer windows. As you can see, they are very similar to each other. You still have the quick access that you can find in the Windows 11. Uh, you have it on the Win uh, Windows 10 as well. Uh, so you have the similar um, you know, configuration. You have the home ribbon in the Windows 10. And in the Windows 11, instead of a home ribbon, you have the same item shown up here. So any end user that you have that is who is familiar with win using Windows 10 and Windows 7, for example, should be okay to uh, use the Windows 11 and adapt to Windows 11 uh, rapidly because it's very easy. They are very similar and Microsoft have kept that similarity between the uh, uh, Windows uh, 7, Windows 11 and Windows 10 editions so that it will be easier for your end user to, to uh, move, migrate to the new operating system. The Windows 11 and Windows 7 Explorer windows here shown here. So the previous slide, we look at the Windows 10 uh, and the Windows 11. So this is Windows 10 and this is Windows 11. And in here, we are looking at the Windows 7 and now comparing to the latest edition of Microsoft Windows, which is the Windows 11. Again, they are very similar. As you can see, this is here it's called this PC, but here it's called computer. It's the same thing. So it shouldn't be a big uh, issue for your end user to migrate from even Windows 7 to the Windows 11 as you can see. Files and directories. Every operating system manages a hard drive, optical drive, USB drives or other types of drives by using directories. Those are called folders sometimes and uh, subdirectories and files. So folders or subdirectories are actually directories in general so keep that in mind the drive is organized with a single root directory so in windows the drive is organized with a single root directory located at the top of the um, uh, hierarchy so the top down hierarchical structure of subdirectories come into play so for example you will have c drive so that would be the drive itself then you will have all the folders and subfolders underneath it the exception is a hard drive which is divided into partitions and each volume has its own root directory and hierarchical structure of subdirectory so the hard drive can be partitioned for example you can have a c and e and f you can partition the same hard drive into smaller pieces so th that way the root going to change from c to e to f to etc etc so that can be divided into different partitions so each volume has its own root directory and hierarchical structure of subdirectories in this case even though they are in the same hard drive so typically if you have a c hard drive and it is only partitioned into one c hard drive and that only that is C is the only partition then what's going to happen is that would be the root 
of your drive and then you have the subdirectories directories and subdirectories underneath it but you can take the c drive and partition into multiple sections and then hence creating c drive e drive f drive x drive for example and those will have each of their own uh, root uh, you know in the respect to that drive letter right for example e drive the root will be e while the c drive the root will be e even though they are in the same hard drive the root directory can hold files or other directories. These directories are called subdirectories, child directories, or folders. And most of your end users may be familiar with the term folders uh, as opposed to these uh, other terms such as subdirectories and child directories. Any directory can have files and other subdirectories in it as it allows the users to uh, use uh, Windows operating systems in uh, many, many different ways. Storage devices such as a USB drive, DVD, or hard drive are organized into directories and subdirectories that contain files, as I mentioned before. And you can view that as a big, uh, you know, picture like a like a graphical picture as this way. So you have a hard drive, and you have partition only one partition in that hard drive in this example. Even though you can have multiple partitions, which I will show you in my next slide, and then you will have that C partition root divided into windows folder data folder and the program files folder and under data folder we'll have the data uh, divided into further subdirectories and this is an example of how a storage device such as a hard drive can be organized into multiple different directories from the root which is would be the c drive in here hard drive can be divided into one or more partitions that can each contain a volume such as the C or E drives. For example, in here, I have divided my uh, hard drive, the C hard drive into C hard drive, E hard drive. So the two hard drives. And both of them um, have same, same file systems, NTFS, but they are two different uh, partitions. The reason why I did that because I'm running a dual boot system uh, on my um, lab environment. So the C drive has the Windows 11 and the E drive has the Windows 10. That because of, I just, uh, you know, did that for my uh, laboratory uh, testing. And I have already posted a YouTube video on how you can create a dual boot system. And if you're interested in that, I'll post a link in the description as well as a card on the top right hand corner so that you have a better uh, understanding about how you can create if you're interested in creating a dual boot system uh, for uh, your configuration so I will post that link there so in here in this lab environment I have a dual boot system so I took one hard drive and I partitioned into two so now I have C drive and E drive so that means we have a C root and an E root and then basically that then divided into uh, you know different folders and subfolders so in here it shows that hard drive again and here uh, in this example we have a partition C and partition D and those partitions are now then divided into those subfolders as mentioned before. So you could have one physical hard drive. What's important here you need to understand you could have one physical hard drive but then you can divide that hard drive into different partitions hence creating different root directories. So you have root C and root E for example. You may have the question what about the drive letters A and B? So if you buy a brand new Windows machine or if you freshly install Windows 11 or Windows 10, it will be installing onto the C drive by default. So what about the drive letters A and B? What happened to those? So you can technically assign uh, letter C through uh, Z or C through Z to each drive on your computer. A and B are usually reserved for the floppy disk drives, but if your computer does not have a floppy disk drive, you may assign A and B to volumes as well. But typically by default, always Windows get installed onto the C drive, whether it's a Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows desktop versions or Microsoft Windows server versions, they will always get installed onto the C drive, whether it's a um, um, you know, uh, the operating system with a GUI or the core Windows Server editions without a GUI, it will typically always get installed on the C drive. 
The reason why Microsoft is forcing users to install onto the C drive, their operating system, even in 2022, when we don't use uh, drive letter A and B because most computers nowadays do not have floppy uh, drives, is that is to support backward compatibility. Microsoft, the reason why Microsoft Windows is very popular in the enterprise and business environments, they are backward compatible. In fact, there are certain Microsoft uh, letters uh, that you cannot, letters and certain phrases you cannot even use to create folds or, uh, folders or files in your Windows. I will explain that on a different video. Uh, you don't need to know that from uh, your A plus certification program. Uh, but the, the reason why we Microsoft have these drive letters put aside because of the backward compatibility. So when you install Microsoft, it will always install onto the C drive, but you can create partitions with the uh, A drive and B drive designation, which I do not recommend you do that because you have more than enough drive letters between the C through Z or C through Z. Uh, so you can uh, have all of those drive letters for your petitions. So I don't see a need uh, for you to use A or B. So recommendation is not to use A and B for backward compatibility, even if you don't use them at all. So even if you don't have floppy disk, just don't use the A and B because there, if there is no need for it. So just go with the C to C. So that's what happened to A and B if you don't know why, uh, you know, it is there. So just to support backward compatibility. So here is a, uh, a explanation on the path that you get on a Windows machine. The complete path to a file includes the volume letter, directories, file name, and file extension. The colon, backslash, and periods are required to separate items in the path. So you can actually see that in here on the Windows 11 machine, I, the path for this file is the C colon. So that colon basically separate the volume letter. And then this is the exact location of that file, which is under users, Sanuja Sena Naik, documents, testing, Sanuja web. So that is the location and the C colon denotes or, you know, designate the, the volume in which this file is located. And if I right click on this file and go to properties, you can see that same path listed right here under the location. And then you have the name of the file and the file type designation right here, same BMP file, and it'll give you the extension, file extension. It could be .bmp. And if you look at the a document file, for, sorry, Microsoft Word file, for example, in here, that is located under data business uh, uh, folder. And this uh, file name called letter has the extension of .docx and it is located under data business folder. And it is in the root directory of C as you shown here. So it, that's the way you read these items. Navigate the folder structure. Tips to navigate when working with File Explorer or Windows Explorer is basically click or double click items in the left pane. It's called the navigation pane uh, to drill down to the subfolders to control how files appear in the right plane in Windows 10, Windows 8. Click off uh, one of the icons in the lower right corner to select a thumbnail view or detail view. For Windows 7, you can click on the view icon and select your view. To control uh, column uh, headings uh, that appears in the details view, you can right click a column heading and se select the headings that you want to appear. Like for example, what I mean is like, if you want to have like a list view here, then you can actually change what columns appear to uh, on your screen to view uh, different items. Uh, so use the search box in the upper right corner uh, of the window. Use the forward and back arrows upper left corner to move forward and backward uh, with the pre uh, to the previous view. Click the right arrow in the path dis uh, displayed in the address bar at the top of the Explorer window to see the drop down of the list of subfolders, which I will show you on the next slide. So right here we have uh, the Windows 11. 
and uh, Windows, uh, I believe this is Windows 10. And you can see, you can click on one of these arrows and you can see the ones previously in here. So for example, if I click on this testing arrow that I have done here, it shows under the testing folder, we have the folders Alberta, BC, Canada, Manitoba, Ontario, and Sanuja web. Sanuja web folder is the one that we are in right now. But when you click on this down arrow, it shows the other folders within that testing folder uh, that you can navigate to. Then in here on the right hand side, the same thing, but in Windows uh, 7, I believe, in Windows 10, uh, I believe this is Windows 7, yeah. And in here again, on the, this, uh, the down arrow will show all these folders located under white flash drive. So that's how you can navigate across multiple folders uh, without even going back to the main folder itself. You can click on one of these folders. For example, if I click on Canada in here, it'll go directly from uh, Sanuja web folder to the Canada folder contained within the testing uh, folder just above it. So that's the hierarchical system, right? So keep that in mind. To create a folder, basically select the parent folder uh, and use of the uh, this method, uh, you can create a folder. So in Windows 10, uh, Windows 8, as well as even Windows 11, select the home ribbon and then click a new folder. Uh, remember the home ribbon is this now so it doesn't have a rib uh, ribbon it's just a bunch of icons you can create a new folder by clicking on the create new folder options in up here uh, but in windows um, 10 and 8 you can use the ribbon in windows 7 you can click the new folder on the menu bar and then that will create a new folder and right click in the also you can use the right click in the white uh, area of the right of pane what this means is basically you will have the white space or the black space if you have the you know the dark mode so you can right click here on this uh, in here and um, you would be able to create a new folder so this is a presentation file the right click menu is the different menu here but when you click on the actual operating system folder or if you right click any the black space or white space depending on if you have dark uh, mode turn on so any space that does not have an item such as a file or a folder, if you right click inside that for they are in that folder, you would be able to select new from the shortcut menu and then the folder uh, to create the uh, regular folder or click compress folder to create a compress folder. So you have those options available. Fold is created and highlighted so that it may be renamed as well when you uh, go through this path, these options to create this uh, new folder, and then you can name it to whatever you like. To create a file, uh, you can use a particular application such as Microsoft Word or Notepad, and then just open that and then start typing or create the folder. Uh, sort of create the file that way so you can just go file save as uh, or file save and that will actually help you create the particular uh, file you need uh, you can also use the file explorer or windows explorer to create it uh, to do that right click in the unused white or again black uh, area if you have the dark mode or turn on basically uh, any unused space inside that folder you can right click uh, and then um, uh, the pane uh, on the right pane you can create a new folder uh, or a new file in this case and click the application you want to use in order to create that file uh, you can rename the file uh, like by changing the uh, you know the file name and by keeping the same extension you can make sure that it's open in the uh, the correct uh, application sorry about that uh, so let's move on to the next one copy move rename or delete files or folders so to copy a file or folder right click the file select copy from the shortcut menu right click in the folder uh, you know empty area uh, where the copied item goes and paste uh, from the shortcut menu again the white area is basically the empty area it could be black too so it doesn't necessarily need to be white if you have dark mode enabled uh, drag and drop items to its no, uh, new location that can move items across so to copy hold down the ctrl key while dragging and dropping to rename file or folder right click it and then select a rename from the shortcut menu to delete a file or folder select the item and press the delete key and can also right click on the item and delete uh, from the shortcut menu as well to select multiple items to delete, copy or move at the same time or, or hold, uh, you, what you need to do is you need to hold down the shift uh, or CTRL key as you select 
uh, and the shift key select adjacent items in a list while ctrl can select uh, non-adjacent items in the list uh, basically you can do select individual items this apply to windows 7 windows 10 as well as also uh, uh, windows 11 except the right click menu may is different in windows 11 uh, and i have explained a video that i have already posted onto my uh, youtube channel about how you can get the uh, those right click uh, content uh, context menu back to uh, what it looks like in windows uh, 10 if you desire to in the windows 11 so i will post that link in the description as well Create a shortcut. So File Explorer or Windows Explorer to uh, locate the data file or program file, then right click and select the click uh, create shortcut. So in here with the Windows 7, you can see you can do this right click and create shortcut in Windows 11. And it, it, that option is still available. Uh, but depending on whether you have that enabled the previous uh, you know the traditional menu right click menu it could look like this or it could have you could have the windows 11 option as well which also have the similar options even though it's not shown here windows 10 flyer explorer options applets or windows 8 7 option fold option applets in the control panel can be used to view and change options assigned to folders uh, that includes the control how users view for files in folders what users can do with the files and the file extensions for example used to identify the file types windows does not show file extensions if it is known which application is associated with a file extension so windows hide the file uh, system uh, so windows hides the system files until you force it to show uh, them as well so keep those in mind when you are working on windows machines now we're going to discuss control panel so the control panel is a window containing applets used to manage hardware software users and the system to access control panel in windows 10 type control panel in the search box on the taskbar accessing the control panel in windows 8 can be uh, done through right clicks uh, start click start in windows 7 uh, and then uh, you can open the uh, control panel and the same principle goes for windows 11 as well you can simply start typing control panel and that will give you an option to go to uh, windows uh, 11 control panel by default control panel appears in category view uh, but uh, utilities uh, are groups by category in that case situation and uh, switch to classic view by clicking the category on the top right hand corner and select either large icons or small icons which i'll show you on my next screen uh, next uh, slide uh, Windows 11 editions do have control panel, but remember the Microsoft may move items out of it as they are rolling uh, out updates into the operating system and then move those items into the settings menu or settings applications of the Windows 11 uh, edition. So keep that in mind. So certain items from Windows uh, control panel for Windows 11 may be moved into Windows 11 settings menu. So here is a screenshot of uh, uh, you know the control panel so many technicians prefer to use the control panel in classic view to view uh, easily uh, access utilities so you can switch to small icons right here uh, or large icons in the classic view and here's a category view uh, that are uh, by uh, turn on by default in both windows 10 and windows 11 so here's a windows um, 11 of, uh, example of a category view and here's a windows 10 uh, example uh, or Windows 7 example of a, uh, a small icon classic view. So you can switch this into classic view by clicking on the view by uh, icon uh, options on the top right hand and selecting to go into this view. So you can do that as a IT technicians if you want to quickly find something. You can also search it in here as well, right? Every, every folder, every option in Windows, you can search it up here. So you have that uh, option to, oops, sorry about that. Uh, I click on it, uh, sorry. Uh, so you can search it in here as well so on the search bar on the top right hand corner that way you can get to uh, the items that you need to search quickly as well now we will be discussing the power options uh, so the power options applet of the control panel can help you conserve power and increase the time before a battery pack on a laptop needs recharging so power options are very very useful especially on laptop windows machines but that can be very useful for desktop and servers as well 
different power saving states includes the sleep mode uh, and the hibernation the sleep mode also called the standby mode or suspended mode and windows saves the current state including open files to memory everything is shut down except the memory and enough of file system to respond to a wake up call uh, and um, windows can still perform windows updates and schedule tasks and windows can be configured to go to sleep after a period of inactivity or you can manually put it into sleep hibernation is different because it saves all the work uh, to the hard drive and powers down the system itself here's the thing about power options in windows 10 and windows 11 the reboot is actually basically a hard reboot as opposed to uh, sleep hibernate or shutdown because shutdown function on windows 10 and windows 11 sometimes act like hibernation so that's why uh, when you run windows update they ask you to reboot or sh uh, update and shut down but that will actually reboot your machine itself you may notice that uh, especially uh, when you reboot a windows 10 or windows 11 machine you sometimes don't get the background image for the logging screens from that internet uh, random pictures instead you get a default windows screen but if you shut down and then uh, restart your computer just shut down and start your computer you'll get that uh, the internet connected uh, new uh, logging screen this is because the reboot is um, actually a real hard reboot as opposed to uh, shut down which is kind of like acting like a hibernation in windows 10 and windows 11 machine this is just a less just an additional technical detail you don't need to know for a plus certification program just something that i know just let you know you know it's something so in windows 10 and windows 11 shutdown is actually act like a hibernation reboot is like a hard reboot so keep that in mind so it's interesting because if you are troubleshooting any uh, program issues you just install a, a certain driver and the driver is not working properly instead of shutting down your computer maybe you should try rebooting your computer that might fix your issue that's why i'm letting you know that, about that system window so system window can give you quick uh, look at the hardware and software that is installed to open a system window in windows 11 open settings go to systems and go to about to open in windows 10 you go to control panel and click system to open the system window in windows 8 you can open uh, using quick launch menu by pressing uh, windows x and then click system and in windows 7 you can open the same one under uh, click start um, right click the computer and select properties and i will show you what they look like uh, in the next uh, slide so the system window uh, reports uh, in windows 11 and windows 10 pro is shown here so in here uh, it's uh, in windows 11 it's under settings systems and about it will have that information display here and in windows 10 uh, you can see it is showing under uh, the control panel uh, all panel and this under system it show that information yeah, as well system information window the system information window is used to view detail information about the system so important information to view include the BIOS UEFI version installed, how much RAM is installed, operating system installation directory, hard drive size, name of the currently running drive, uh, drivers. So the device uh, drivers, uh, small programs uh, stored in the, uh, on the hard drive uh, that tells the computer how to communicate with specific hardware devices. Those all can be viewed through system information window. It also lists the uh, uh, the startup programs, print jobs in progress, and currently running tasks as well. So that's what the system information window will show. To uh, run system information in Windows 11 and Windows 10, basically, uh, you know, uh, open your uh, run command. Uh, so just go to start and type run, and then it'll give you the run command options. And just type MS Info 32 in the search box and that will open up the system uh, information window. Uh, for Windows 8, uh, open the quick launch menu, uh, run, uh, then uh, type run, and then type msinfo32.exe, that will open that. And the Windows 7 is the same thing, msinfo32.exe, that will open up the system information window. 
So once you do that, uh, what it looks like is this. So this is what it looks like on my computer. It has some system summary information at the uh, very top. And this is what the default page looks like on the system summary. And you can expand the items from the left hand pane to look at some system information uh, that you needed to uh, for your troubleshooting or other purposes. Windows 11 and Windows 10 settings app. So the Windows 11 and the Windows 10 settings app is a user-friendly interface to access Windows settings. Open the app from the start menu, the quick launch menu, or by pressing Windows I. So the, you can hold down the Windows key and I, that will also open up the Windows 11 and Windows 10 settings app. The primary menu includes settings for the following, the system, devices, network and internet, personalization, apps, accounts, time, gaming, ease of access, privacy, and uh, update and security. So these are actually for Windows 10. Uh, Windows 11 have other options that I will show you on the um, next screen. And this thing should actually read Windows 10 and Windows 11. Sorry about that. Uh, so we'll go into the next page. So this is what the, the Windows 10 and Windows 11 settings apps looks like. Here's the Windows 11 and here's the Windows uh, 10. So as you can see on the Windows 11, we have the systems, Bluetooth and devices, network and internet, personalization, apps, accounts, time and language, gaming, accessibility, privacy and security, Windows update. And within these main items, you have multiple sub items. For example, on the systems, we have display, sound notification, storage, multitasking, they keep going down like about the system, etc, etc. And each of these items will have uh, some other additional items underneath it. So that's what the Windows 11 look like. Windows 10 will have the system devices, uh, networking, you know, phone, apps. So again, the similar categorization under these categorizations, you will have multiple items within it. Once you select any of these items and you go in there. So just like the system have different items such as display, sound and notification. When you select system, you will see those kind of similar items in the Windows 10 settings apps as well. Again, I, don't, I want to hi hi highlight this. These are the items that you get on the Windows 10. Uh, but Windows 11 also have the similar items as you can see up here. How Windows controls access to network resources. If a network is a public network, which is public hotspot, resources are not shared. If uh, the private networks um, uh, share their res uh, you know, if you have a private networks, uh, that then that way you can, you know, private network setting is the one that will allow the sharing of resources. So if you set your network connection to public network connection, what's going to happen is it will not share anything. But with the private network connections, you will have the ability to share folders and files and printers, etc. Windows offer three ways to share resources, work groups, home groups and domains. So those are three major ways that the main items that Windows used to categorize the way how resources will be shared within Windows devices. Windows Workgroup and Home Group. So peer-to-peer, -peer, also known as P2P network, uh, is a network that doesn't have centralized control. So there is no centralized server. You basically uh, communicate between a Windows computer and another Windows computer. In a Windows Workgroup, each computer maintains a list of users and their rights and uh, that particular computer, rights on that particular computer. So that's basically a peer-to-peer -peer network. That's what the Windows Workgroup is. So the Windows Workgroup act like a peer-to-peer -peer network that allow different Windows uh, devices to communicate with each other. In Home Group, each computer shares files, folders, libraries, and printers with other computer in the Home Group. It, pro it provides uh, less security than a Work Group, uh, but it make it easier for home users to share resources among each other. So here is a diagram of a Windows workgroup, uh, which is a type of a peer-to-peer -peer network where no single computer controls the network and each computer controls its own resources. This is an easy way to like demonstrate how that works. So for example, this printer is, can directly communicate with the Windows 8 and the Windows 10 and the other uh, laptop and scanners and everything. Uh, it doesn't need to go through a central server or a central controlling device. So for example, in a corporate environment, you may have a server that will be handling the network servers and all these devices. 
and controlling the access to users and devices. But in here, you don't have that. It will be directly communicating against each other. Windows domain. A Windows domain is implemented on a large private network. However, I will say even a small private networks. Uh, if a small business with 10 people, for example, uh, that uh, you need to communicate with each other, I would still install Windows domain. A plus certification specifically say about uh, implementing Windows domain on large uh, um, private networks, but you can do it on a small private networks as well. What important is Windows domains are mostly associated with corporate and business environments, not typically associated with home environments. And as an IT technician, you should not recommend Windows domains to home environments because that will create more headaches for your home users who may not be technically inclined. So do not install Windows domains in home environments unless it is required for whatever specific uh, use case scenario. Forms, uh, it, it basically what, what the Windows domain does is it forms a logical group of network uh, computers that shares a centralized directory database of user account information and security. It provide a type of client server network where resources are managed by a centralized computers. Uh, the directory database is controlled by a network operating system also known as a NOS. Uh, so again, unless there is an absolute need for a a domain controller in a home environment, don't install Windows domains at a home environment, only corporate and business environments. Windows 11, 10, 8 allows three types of uh, accounts to sign into a Windows, a local account, a Microsoft account, or, or a network ID account. Windows 7 uses a local accounts and network IDs, but does not use Microsoft accounts. Microsoft offers two options for managing domains. Those include the Active Directory, which I have done already a demonstration uh, on my YouTube channel. You can go ahead and check it out if you're interested in uh, how to install Active Directory domain controller on a Windows server. So the Windows server controls a network using this directory database called the Active Directory domain controllers. The other option called the Azure Active Directory which is a cloud-based system which manages users in the cloud and create a virtual network of users connected through the internet. Windows 11 and Windows 10 offers three ways to authenticate a user. That includes the domain join, Azure Active Directory domain join system and bring your own device also known as BYOD experience. Domain setup. Uh, to change the way Windows connect to the network, uh, you'll need to uh, know the network ID and the password to the domain provided by the administrator. So in other words, you have to have uh, administrative privileges to jo do domain join a device to a uh, Windows domain. Domain join a Windows 10 or 8 device. You can open the, uh, the um, system window under the computer name, uh, go to domain, go to the uh, workgroup settings, change settings, and in the system properties box, you can enter the network ID and follow the directions on the screen. To domain join a Windows 11, you open the settings this time. Remember, instead of going in through any of these, you just go to the settings because that's where most of the items will be located in Windows 11. Under the system in the settings, go to uh, uh, about section, select about and under the device specification, click domain or work group and follow the directions on the screen. Windows server installation and Active Directory domain services also known as ADDS is again, is not part of the A plus certification program. You do not need to know how to install a Windows uh, Active Directory domain uh, services uh, for your A plus certification program because A plus certification program is mostly focused on consumer Microsoft products as opposed to system administration and server administration products. However, if you are interested in Active Directory domain services and how to install it and how to configure it, please check my YouTube videos on Windows Server Administration. It has already been posted uh, on my YouTube channel and I would recommend that you go ahead and watch those uh, items if you are interested in them. I have already done domain joining a Windows desktop uh, on my YouTube channel and you can check that video as well.
public and private networks. So I briefly mentioned public and private networks on my previous slide. So let's look at what they actually means a little bit in detail. In Windows 11, 10, 8 offers three types of network security options that includes the public network, private network and domain network. Public network is a, win, uh, a network where Windows configures strong firewall settings and you cannot join a home group or domain. It's just to protect you from uh, threat actors in a public environment. Private networks, you can join a home group or domain and share files and printers. So if you are setting up a computer, in most cases for your end clients, it's, uh, end users, it's going to be private network. Domain network is a situation where the domain yields control for authentication user, authenticating users and sharing files, folders and printers to uh, settings in Active Directory uh, domain controller or Azure Active Directory uh, for managing the domain. So that's where the corporate environments and the business environments and user installation come into play. Windows 7 security option offers public network, home network, uh, work network and domain network. So the public network is same as that of the Windows 10, 8 um, and 11. Uh, so basically the, the network discovery is turned off and you cannot join a home group or domain. Home network will allow you to turn on the network discovery and you can join the home group uh, and uh, the work network will allow the network discovery turn on but also allow you to join a domain but not a home group. So it will turn on the network discovery and allow you to join the domain but not a home group. Domain network is the domain uh, yields controls uh, for authentication for users sharing files, folders and printers to say, uh, settings in the Active Directory just like in the domain network in the Windows 11, uh, 10 and 8 options. So if you want to learn more about uh, domains and how domains work because I have mentioned them multiple times in this lecture even though it's not part of the A plus certification program, you can still go ahead and watch my YouTube channel videos and I will be posting more and more uh, server administration videos onto my YouTube channel. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss those videos. So please check out my YouTube channel for additional information. And that's everything for today. If you like these type of videos, please thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, good luck and have a nice day.